Thank you. Yes, it's Games Master time again. The one time of the week when you can forget all about the hassles of the firm EQ and get soft and moist about the things that matter in life. Freshly laundered towels, hot Ribena and video games. We've got our usual licorice all sorts of a show for you tonight with news, tips, reviews and three game playing challenges. We're going to go straight into the first one now, so let's call up the man who put the M in microchip, the Games Master. Welcome. So you've returned once more to pit your skills against one of my little challenges. I must commend your audacity. The first of this week's jolly jaunts is on a fishy little game called Robocod. To satisfy me, you will need to get through the very first level in less than one minute, collecting 50,000 points in the process. You can amass these points by collecting bonus items from around the level and by jumping on villains. A little tip. Don't forget to use the hydraulic stretch body, which will enable you to get past spikes unharmed when there's not sufficient room to jump. 50,000 points in one minute. Seize the moment. And I think our audience here are looking a bit restless for some serious action. So what we'll do is throw out this challenge to them. If there's anybody out there who fancies taking on the guise of James Pawn Robocod, could they please thrust their arms into the air? Um, we'll try and pick three likely contestants. Who have we got? Oh, there's a, oh, there's a young man peeking around there. Yes, how about you for the first contestant? And now let's see, two more. Now, who have we got? Oh, yes, there's two girls together there. Yep, two girls there. Yes, those two girls there would like to come up as well. A round of applause for our three contestants. Lovely. Who have we got here? Mark Wright. Mark Wright, rock legend. Okay, and next we have? Julie Marlowe. Welcome to Games Master Julie. And finally? Claire McNaney. Okay then, Claire, I think we're going to have you playing first, okay? So if you'd like to trot up to our game playing seat. Now, Mark and Julie, if you'd like to go over to the organ and turn your backs to us so you don't see what's happening when Claire's playing. If you'd like to sit there and we'll come to your turn in due course. And keeping me warm and toasty in the pulpit is Games Master's resident boffin, Dave Perry. Dave, welcome. Hi, Dominic. Now, Dave, it's very tough, this. 50,000 points in 60 seconds. What's the best tip you can give them? Uh, well, the thing is, just to get used to the controls, uh, he's got a telescopic body in this one, um, which you can activate through the fire button. And when you're jumping on top of the bad guys, you've got to remember to pull down on the joystick so he disappears inside his armour. OK, let's hope our contestants bear that in mind. Claire, are you ready? Then your 60 seconds begin now. OK, off we go then. 60 seconds, 50,000 points. straight back for that star. That's a, that's a fairly hidden star. She did well to find that straight away. That'll give her some extra energy and stop her getting killed quite so quickly. Oh, and Ooh, she, there, and she doesn't want to get stuck under there because those spikes will kill her. She wants to use the, that's it, the fire button, the telescopic body, grab hold of it and shinny across. OK, now she missed a couple of objects there. What, is that important? There's a few points there. She could have done with them, but she can still make, can still make the 50,000 without those objects there. She's okay, those we're coming up for nearly halfway through the challenge and she's... Oh! Up. Oh, and she's bought it! So, unfortunately, Claire's challenge has ended there. If she'd like to swap with Mark, we'll go on to our second competitor. Round of applause for Claire. <laughs> now, Dave. What can Mark learn from Claire? I think basically it's just use um, Robocod to, to his full extent. He's got lots of little tricks that he can use to get past obstacles. OK, Mark, are you ready? Yeah. Then your 60 seconds begin now. OK, so of course Mark toddling along. He's done that first leap successfully. He missed the little star that Claire found earlier. Okay, but he's, but got... he's got, look at all these points here. Now he wants to use that telescopic body oh, that he's got to get across there. Fire button, fire button, Mark. Oh, that's, that's it, it. hang on. There OK, now he's walling across, across there. there. 12,100 points, 20 seconds gone, right. but his life's pretty well. low. Pull down the fire. That's it, there we are. He wants to stay on this platform now. Oh, has he made it? Oh, he's he oh, oh, just walloped by the straight snake. Straight into the snake. Halfway through the time and halfway through the points, but Mark's challenge is over. Round of applause to Mark. Dave. Julie's our final contestant. How can you help her with this game? Well, the pressure's off her a bit. She knows the other two haven't quite made the challenge. Um, she's still got to do it within the minute, but, you know, once again, just take your time and use that telescopic body. OK, then. Julie, are you ready? Yep. Then your 60 seconds begin now. 
Okay, Julian's made a good start. She's got the side. Straight back this time. I give her a bit of extra life. She has to jump over these spikes. Okay, she's pausing. Oh, yeah, she's got to go in there, but you know, you know she's, she's made up the energy with that star. Oh, that's right. She's, she's got the technique here. She's like the old marine shimmy across across the gap. Get okay, to the other well, side. that's a quarter of the time gone. Two thousand four hundred points. Drop down on these lips. There she goes. That's it. Great. Get on that. She's just sit on that platform. Oh, Brilliant. She's... Mind the snake. Oops, she's Hearing got the furthest, these furthest so far up under this. Yes. yes. She wants to hit a few of these. Okay, she's going to jump, jump up. Jump up and hit them. That's it. A bit harder. That's it. Get that penguin. Oh, and then she's That's over it. half. She's, she's only got 20 seconds left. She's, she's going to have the next one. Very, very quick. She'll go much Jimmy. quicker. Go she's Jimmy. only got 15 go seconds go left. Jimmy. Yeah, get the tap. 27,000. She's got to move down. That's poison. She's got 10 seconds left. 20,000 points. She's going to have to really motor now. Oh, so the spikes! Oh, it's oh, the other one's table, there's a point! And three seconds left! Three, two, one! I think she's gonna get it! Oh! Just, got just it out of time end. and just out of energy. The closest anyone's got, but Julie's challenge also ends in failure. <laughs> Bad luck to all three years. Julie, you got the closest out of all three of our competitors. Dave and I thought you were going to do it. Just a little bit of trouble near the end there with a snake, I think. Yeah, it was a bit hard for me. OK, but did you enjoy, enjoy coming into play? Yeah. Another round of applause then for our three contestants. Thank you very much. <laughs> and while our contestants tread wearily away, we'll cast our eyes on this week's reviews. Our theme this week is adventure games. First off, claustrophobic caverns crawling with creepies swamp the Nintendo in The Immortal. The Immortal is actually um, a very good game in its original incarnation. It still is a good game and it has worked really quite well on the NES. I do like the adventure, the adventure role-playing games. And this is certainly the best of its type on the Nintendo system. So I think they've done a very good job of it, bearing in mind the limitations of the hardware. I mean, you know, you don't expect sort of multicolour graphics, but they work well, and it's a good game. Next up on the PC, LeChuck's back, and this time he's irate as everybody's favourite pirate returns in The Secret of Monkey Island 2. For playability, it can't be beaten, in my opinion. There's a lot of amusing text in there, and it's a very, very strong title indeed. It's funny, it uh, sets a nice level of challenge, and it's very addictive. It's brilliant. This game is so brilliant that I want to run away with it and marry it. And finally, on the Master System, a caper a la Dungeons & Dragons, Heroes of the Lance. A good role-playing title, Good, very sound graphically, a little lacking in the sound. I prefer something that's a bit more straightforward and did find that Heroes of the Lance was really quite a specialist game. Frankly, it's, it's a bit slow and uh, it might not have a, a mass market appeal. OK, now for our new game section. One of this year's hottest games will undoubtedly be Alien 3. Here to give us a wee peek is Joe Bonner from Probe Software. Alien 3 is a game based on what must be this year's most eagerly awaited film, Alien 3. You have to go round the complex, um, dodging aliens that come at you from out of the floor, out of the ceiling, from behind doors, all over the place, an utter infestation of aliens. Once you've managed to get past them, you actually rescue the prisoners and they bow at your knees in thanks. There are 15 levels like this, all with different graphics, um, and there is a big monster in each one for you to dispatch. And finally, this week's special feature. These days, a computer game isn't worth nout unless it's accompanied by a funky soundtrack. So here's the top five in the Games Master Hit Parade. On a mission from God at number five are the Blues Brothers with the theme from Peter Gunn. At 
number four, Mad Bad and Kind to Monkeys, Michael Jackson struts his way through Moonwalker to the sound of Smooth Criminal. <laughs> Doing the do at number three is Betty Boo with the theme from Magic Pockets. It's straight in at number two for Cold Cut's top banana anthem, Global Chaos. <laughs> but sitting pretty at the top of the Games Master Pops are Bomb the Bass with the Mega Blast riff from Xenon 2. <laughs> Now it's time for our celebrity challenge and we'll go over to Games Master to find out what it is. It's time to go to the muscle and hyperbole of the World Wrestling Federation for the second challenge. Didn't have anything like that in my day, but rather fun, isn't it? The first person to achieve a fall, holding your opponent's shoulder to the canvas for three seconds, for those of you who don't know, uh, wins. So flex those biceps and prepare to grapple. No one likes a good grapple more than I do, and I am positively dribbling at the prospect of this bout. We have in the red corner, weighing in at six stone, the Hertfordshire hero, David Kay, and his opponent tonight, weighing in at considerably more than six stone, the most feared man in British wrestling, Kendo Nagasaki. <laughs> David, welcome to Games Master. Now, how do you fancy your chances against the man who has pasted Big Daddy in the past? Um, bit confident, but I'll see how it goes. Okay, that's great. Now, you're against Kendo, or uh, can I call you Ken? Okay. Um, how do you fancy your chance against David? He's uh, a bit smaller than your average opponent. Dominic, Dominic, excuse me. I'm sorry, who, who are you? I'm Lloyd Ryan, Kendo's manager. I'm afraid you'll have to talk to me because Kendo won't speak to anybody. OK, then well, perhaps you can answer then. How do you think Kendo will rate against an opponent that's somewhat smaller than he's used to? Um, I think he'll beat him quite easy. If he can beat people like Giant Haystacks and Pat Roach, I think this little fella here is going to be quite a walkover. Well, I wonder what our audience has to say about that. <laughs> OK, well, it looks like it's building up to a thrilling contest between the young contender from Hertfordshire and the fearsome grappler, Kendo Nagasaki. If you want to see the outcome, Join us after the break. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, then we're eagerly awaiting the bout of the century between young David Kay, the Hertfordshire hero, and the fearsome Kendo Nagasaki. With me at ringside, as always, is Jazz Rigno. Welcome, Jazz. Hiya. How do you see the fight going between young David and big Kendo? It's going to be a tricky one. I think what he needs to do is use kicks and punches to wear down the energy and then go for a quick pin. Right, and in fact, David has actually taken the character of Hulk Hogan, and that's a fight that Grapple fans in Britain have long wanted to see. Kendo Nagasaki against Hulk Hogan. Are the competitors ready? Seconds out, round one. And Hulk Hogan, oh, a flying kick misses Kendo completely, though Kendo's pacing around, he's dodging him. Kendo tries a flying kick and he misses it. Hulk gets it, Hulk gets it though, Hulk gets it though. Hulk gonna try and body slam. Oh my goodness me, Hulk misses completely with a flying kick, misses with a punch as well. Slams Kendo down, he's looking to get him, but oh, and he's got an elbow drop, one elbow drop. Julian Rignall, what an exciting start to this fight. He's doing well, he needs to get in there. Oh, he's going up the oh post, my God, he's, he's going the for the block. Oh my God, he's got the post, flying leap. Oh, and he's just missed the flying leap. Yeah, yeah that was the, uh, the old Hulk splashdown. Oh, he's got him again. What a, what a tremendous player this Hulk Hogan is here. Hulk hasn't lost any energy yet. He's really Keep jabbing with that A button. He's uh, wasting time at the moment. He needs to get in close. Keep jabbing with the A button. Reduce that energy and then pin him. He'll be dead. Right, so the longer Kendall goes without being hit, his energy actually goes back up again. Yes. Oh my god, Hendo's climbing up the poke of the corner post. Well, he's, he's taking a leap, but uh, Hulk no, does. He went for the drop kick and completely missed it there. It was an opportunity okay, now Hulk's wasted. behind them. Hulk's picked up. He's climbing as he's going no, he's going, he's going up to the corner post again. Hulk, he tries to jump, but he just misses. No, oh, he's out of the ring. He's out of the ring. He oh my could God, mess he it up here get... unless he climbs it in there. So he's, oh, he's no, he's right. back and then tries another jump, just misses Kendall. Kendall's down. He's going to try and go for the pin. 
It's gone from behind, flung him over the shoulder. One elbow drop. Right he's in got him. He's got him. Oh! Nagasaki's out of energy. All he needs to do is pin him now, and it's all over. He's got to get oh. in close. He's got to use A button. Oh, over here, six and four. Owen Kendall's flying at the corner post there. Hotton is always got him. He's got to pin him down now. He's got to pin him down. He's got to pin him down. He's pin him down. One, two, three. David, congratulations. One fall in the very first round. You certainly gave Kendall a pasting there. Sure did. Well, I would like to offer you a congratulations and a couple of very special prizes. Firstly, the prize that everybody wants to get their hands on, our special humongous Golden Games Master joystick. Thank you. And as, and as a little extra, the official WWF Championship belt. Congratulations, David. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, Mr. Ryan, what have you got to say about Kendo's defeat? I haven't got to say anything about Kendo's defeat. I think we've been conned and we're not staying in here. We're going. <laughs> Well, all I can say is there's no place for losers on this show, only winners. But sometimes even winners have problems. And if you're stuck in a particular game, why not write in to your favourite agony uncle, Games Master? Hello, Games Master. Oh, I'm delighted to see you. Welcome to my kingdom. Now, are we ready? On Zelda, I can't for the life of me find the whistle in the second quest. Do you know where it is? I do indeed, young man. And locating it requires a modicum of initiative. The whistle is in the blank square in the middle of the level. To get there, you need to go through to the room directly above it, and then walk down through the wall, as the wall is false. Have you got that? Yes, thanks very much. Splendid. Well, go and try. Uh, who's next up, I wonder? Hello, Games Master. Now, what can I do for you? I keep getting killed as I run down the snow hill on the second stage of Strider. What am I doing wrong? Hmm, hmm. Let me see. If I remember correctly, the secret there is not to run at all, but rather to jump as you start your descent and keep on jumping until you approach the bottom. That should enable you to jet down the snow hill unscathed. Oh, thanks very much. Bye. Uh, next, please. I wonder who we have now. Hello, Games Master. In Mega Man, how do you kill the big orange Sandman? I'm finding it impossible to get past him. Oh, dear. More death and destruction. At least they're all villains, I suppose. Now, listen. To dispose of the big orange Sandman, you'll need to jump over his body parts as they come onto the screen. And then, when he is completely formed, use your electron to shoot him in the eye. Does that satisfy your destructive lust? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Well, enough good deeds for the time being. See you along. So, some juicy computer tidbits this week. Now, for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master has planned. I thought tonight we'd go out with a flurry on Thunder Force 3. Your mission is to get to the underwater world of Siren. But just to spice things up a little, I thought we'd have a bit of a hoot and put it on the rather tricky mania mode. As well as negotiating the treacherous currents, you'll need to avoid um, or destroy all manner of mutant hybrids hell-bent on your destruction. Only then will you be able to take on the decidedly resilient Pisein End of Level Guardian, the last obstacle between you and glory. Good luck. The galaxy is depending on you. And the person about to thrust his way through all manner of underwater opposition is tonight's final contestant, Jeremy Gomez. <laughs> Welcome to Games Master, Jeremy. Now, in this game, you're on the planet Siren on mania level. It's going to be pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. How do you fancy your chances? Uh, uh, I'm not exactly confident, but I'll have a go. 
Okay, because it's the toughest level yeah. that you are on. Well, Jeremy, you've got a lovely T-shirt, so I wish you all the best. <laughs> um, if you'd like to sit in a hot seat, we'll get ready to play. Okay, thanks, Liz. And joining me for a furious thrash in the pulpit is Neil West from Sega Power. Welcome, Neil. Hi. Now, Neil, I'm not kidding this time. This is a tough game. This is very tough. Thunder Force 3 is a tough game at the best of times, but on Mania level, it's, it's almost impossible. Um, there is one tip that I would give Jeremy, um, and that's make use of the weapons. You can pick up new ones as you go along, and you get two different ones to start off with, and they are useful for different things. So just make the most of those. OK, then. Right, so, Jeremy, you have to get to the end of the level and kill the Guardian. Neil says, use your weapon wisely. Are you ready? Then start the game. Off he goes. Okay, lovely tranquil water, but it's going to change quickly, Neil. It certainly will. Oh, he's, he's bought lost one already. already. Those tranquil little bubbles actually will buffet your ship around, often knocking you into um, enemies, so you've really got to watch out for them. Okay, not the best of stars, but he's got lovely little no, mutant shellfish coming out here. When they named this level Mania, they weren't joking. It really is impossible. Now, what's okay. his W then? Right, pick up that W. He's now got an extra weapon. Press the C button and he'll be able to switch onto a different weapon, which he ought to do very soon. He's chosen not to at the moment. There he goes. Oh, he's oh, got he's it and he's no scenario. He got it, then he lost it. He now he's coming to a very tight passage here. This is underwater, which makes it even more tricky. Just got to keep a cool head and keep going. Oh, he's bowling again. He's and he got... just missed an extra life as well. That was a big mistake. Oh my god, mutant lobster with a Barry yeah, Sheen right. helmet he's on. He's got to kill this thing off before he passes it. Oh, too late. He'll now get a shot. From oh, reverse. he's firing out yeah. of his derriere. Oh, he's dodged them he quite dodged well. He dodged that very well indeed, but the trouble isn't over yet. Oh no, Wait, he's on his last life now. Things aren't looking good for Jeremy. Not I good pity at all. him out there. Not good at all. Okay, it's cleaned up a bit now. Not too much going on screen, but he still isn't out of the woods. He's, he's aiming in the wrong part to destroy he is, that. He is, he is. He won't hit him on the helmet because the helmet's invincible. Okay, oh, oh. That was well done. Well Lovely manoeuvring there. Oh, oh, my God. Straight from the top. Right on his head. Stumped him a bit. Game, Game over. over, Jeremy. <laughs> nice try. Oh. Oh. Jeremy, you found that pretty tough going, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Any bits in particular that were very hard? Uh, well, the current pushing me up and the fact that there wasn't much space to manoeuvre in, so... Yeah. OK, thank you very much again, Jeremy Gomez! <laughs> so, with that exhilarating but ultimately fruitless effort, tonight's show comes to an end. Well, it's smoking jacket and steaming jasmine time. We'll see you in seven days for another Games Master. Good night.